Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. This morning, and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. Well, good morning. It is Friday, the 25th of March, 2022, and you are on the clock with Erin Green. And today is a sports Friday with Mr. Eric Sawyer, who will be joining me in a moment. So let me get to some housekeeping notes. I have a note here. I need to tell you all about something uh, that's happening tomorrow. Blairwood Academy is having their spring festival, and the students will be s- selling products uh, that they've made, and all proceeds will go to the school. Now, I'm going to need you all to check out a particular booth called Bahamian Sweet Bush Tea, and they're going to have things like soursop leaf, tea, fever grass tea, mango leaf tea, pear leaf tea, and dilly leaf tea. You got to go check these young Bahamians out. That's Blairwood Academy, and that's tomorrow. They are having their spring festival. But I tell you what, give the school a call today. Give the school a call today and find out all the details so you can join them and support their efforts. And I don't mind. I don't mind they my competitors. I don't mind they making bush teas like I'm making bush teas. You go support the young children. Tell them what you think. Give them your ideas. Give them your support. Good morning, Blairwood Academy, and congratulations and success on this year's Spring Festival. I like good news, good news, good news. And I want to say good morning to a young Bahamian princess. I hope I get this name correct. Protocol having been established. Good morning to Miss Anaya Moss. I think Miss Anaya Moss has become a temporary part of the Guardian family. And so we say not just congratulations, but thank you for doing such a stellar job welcoming the Duchess of Cambridge yesterday. Fantastic. I just want to know whether I could hire you in the future. Because if I could get up every morning and have a beautiful Bahamian princess deliver my uh, tuna and grits and my sea grape lemonade to me every morning, look, I'll pay you whatever you need, madam. Good morning, sir. Morning. That's how y'all be doing it up there? I mean, way up there? I mean, no, no. Look, that's fancy. I mean, it ain't really way up there, because remember, I'm only Steph Curry's height. Yeah, yeah. True, yeah. true. Right. True. I like, uh, I make vegan corned beef out of coconut husk. After you press the oil 
out of the coconut to make, I mean, yeah, to make coconut oil after you press the coconut, I just take that dry husk and I just make vegan corned beef for your boy. Top that. You can't top that. No, no, I can't. You can't top that. I, I, I was trying. I was trying to see where you're going with that. Trying to see how you make. I go into the Rasta camp. That's where I go into the Rasta camp. Rasta camp. My Rasta brethren, okay. who, are, who are all Bahamian, right? Except they don't eat corned beef. Except they don't eat corned beef. Right. They can bring them in. You know, it's beef. Yeah. And it's corn, and corn really ain't real. So there you go. Right. We ain't fighting Rasta on that. No. I can just make them some local vegan corned beef. <laughs> anyway, Miss Moss, you did a wonderful job, man. Thank you for representing the Bahamas. And I can tell you this, you need to know this. It don't matter how some of us feel about whether they should have come or not. The fact is that you represented us well. And you take that with you. You take that with you, my friend. What a wonderful, wonderful day. Now, there's some things in the newspaper I just want to touch on. The amended Road Traffic Act comes into force. So it's time to shift your culture, and your thinking about driving and your obligation and responsibilities on the road. Pick up today's Nassau Guardian, a very important article to read. I'm going to invite, uh, I'm going to try and find the Minister of Transport and see if I could get her on the show or some of our representatives to help us understand the changes in the law and what is required of us now. Uh, but I will tell you this. The legislation which was passed in the Senate last uh, two years ago almost increases penalties for people convicted of vehicular manslaughter, that's killing people with your car, by reckless driving to imprisonment of up to 15 years. What? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, the, the penalty is going up. You go to jail for 15 years for killing somebody. Now, it should be more than that, but this is a good start because before... There was, I think, very little jail time. Ten grand. And, yeah. Ten grand. Yeah, which is That's heinous. It. That's it. Yeah. And so, y'all check out this article today. Now, you got to forgive me, Mr. Sawyer. Shoot. What happened? Well, today is the UN International Day of Remembrance for the victims of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. I didn't want to mention that. That's an important thing to note, particularly since we're in the eighth year of the international decade for people, peoples of African descent. It's even more poignant that my cousins have come to visit us this week and are here today in yeah. the Bahamas. Yeah, man, yeah, man. They had some kung fritters yesterday, some kung fritters and, you know, sky juice and, I hope so. and these things. I hope so. They'd be better. In fact, they should have only been allowed to serve them things that are Bahamian. Like, yeah. I, I would have passed a law. Y'all y'all like to pass a law and then forget about them, but I would have passed this law. While they hear only Bahamian things, only Bahamian made, you could only consume what we could produce in the Bahamas. And ride on paved, on, on brand new paved roads. But that's another story for another day. They was paving up to midnight last night. I hope so. I'm like telling you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, the people responsible for Montague. If y'all had started a little bit earlier, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not saying you did a bad job. I'm just saying if you had started a little bit earlier, you could have done a better job. Well, right? I'm pretty sure they got some fake plants and whatnot out there stuck in the ground making it look good. I'm sure there's pretty, 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 pretty. I hope so, because I, I could use a few fake, fake plants in my <laughs> house, in my yard. <laughs> when they're done, though, and then this is the key, Bahamians, remember, don't go to the wedding and take the table centerpiece in the middle of the wedding. You, gotta yeah, you wait have to wait until right. after the wedding. When the DJ start playing. Hello, Lahi, here, here, I come on. Nah, yeah, boom. yeah, when yeah. your uncle looked to go see a Veronica Bishop in the place. Right. Yeah. That's, that's when you, you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's the perfect you distraction. So, my cousin's supposed to be having a mini regatta today. Right. But it raining. I mean, really well and truly, right? If uh -huh. you go into a regatta, uh -huh. and the regatta... Is being held on water. Uh huh. Rain should not stop. Listen, but the way that the boat works, 
Is the water not supposed to get in the boat? No, but I mean, you could get splashed. Actually, most times you get splashed from the water as you sail on the water. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. See, I, I've been to professional sailing classes. Okay. I mean, semi-professional because they tried to get me to capsize the boat and I tell them, no, y'all can't be real. But the water's supposed to stay outside the boat. That's what I know. Right. So this rain thing is a problem. But see, I think Prince William did this. Because I know the queen have one of them weather machines. And she rich and fancy. William was supposed to sail against Kate today. They're supposed to compete against each other. Yeah. And I know William did not come all the way to the Bahamas for us to see him get beat by Kate. I know he's get beat by Kate on the regatta Competition. Oh, on regard That's competition. it. Yeah, regard yeah, competition. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. Of course. I know she's beat him all the time. Oh. But he ain't come all the way to the Bahamas to get beat by her on the regatta. <laughs> so he, he, he called his Grammy, said, Grammy, look here. I, I know I don't ask you for much. I'm not like my other cousins. I don't ask you for much. I don't ask him for much. Could you turn on the weather machine, please? Because Kate been stretching. Yeah. She get off that plane, she starts she stretching. Shit. Yeah, yeah. She ready. Yeah, so... Um, I want to say good luck, Prince William. Good luck, the Duke of Cambridge. Good luck to you, because all the women in the Bahamas is going to be cheering for Kate. And all the men who know what's good for them will be cheering for Kate I also. Swear. Yes, mm -hmm. just, and don't get upset. Don't be upset at all. But I think it's a good thing, mini regatta. I hope they have it. I hope they compete. And I hope that the Ministry of Education has facilitated the participation of all the young people that have competed in the Bahamas National Sailing School and the Youth Summer Sailing Program over the last few years. Now, I know we've been down for COVID, 2019, 2020, well, part of 2019, 2020, 2021, part of 2022, but... It's starting to make an appearance. Right. Mm -hmm. And so after last week's show, one of our audience members called me and gave me a good little history on youth participation in sailing in the Bahamas. And they explained to me that, in fact, there's been a vibrant youth sailing program uh, sponsored by the government and private sector, in particular the Nassau Yacht Club has been the home, I think, of both of these programs for a while. Excellent. And they've gone into a number of primary schools, like the Bahamas National Sailing Program, Woodcock Primary, D.W. Davis Jr., N.O. Nash, Thelma Gibson Primary, C.W. Sawyer, L.W. Young, S.C. McPherson, T.A. Thompson Jr., Sandlin's Primary, Anatole Rogers Sr., Blairwood Academy, as well as the Girl Guides, right? And so my concern that uh, making sailing and sloop sailing the national sport at this time may be sort of clinging to our colonial vestiges. One thing is, is true is that effort has been made, concerted, consistent effort with money in hand to ensure that the average Bahamian child has an opportunity to engage in sailing because they got a vibrant program in the public schools and the government runs a summer sailing program as well. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So we got a future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, well, that doesn't mean that sailing wins it, right? Like that, that's going to be the choice for national sport. No, because we got basketball, but go on. I think it's still a good, um, I think it's still in contention. And I, I think it needs to be explored. And I'll give you all that because my basketball day is over a long time. I'll give you all that. Um, and I wanted to mention that. So I just want to make another note. The Bahamas Sailing Association acts as the governing authority of the sport of sailing in the Bahamas under the supervision of the International Sailing Federation. So if you're interested in sailing, if you're interested in youth sailing, supporting it or getting your kids involved, Check out the Bahamas Government Youth Summer Sailing Program under the Department of Culture. The Bahamas National Sailing School, which is a uh, uh, NGO, private sector, and the Bahamas Sailing Association. Now, 
There's plenty of stories in the news. Mr. Sawyer, ministry launches International Sports Day for Development and Peace. Wow. Now, this is a good thing. This is a great thing. I mean, you know, like, especially in the wake of everything that's going on, mm -hmm. you know. Around the world. War. Around the world. We need, we need a day of peace and a day to develop how we can come about and maintain peace. Yeah, without a doubt. Because most of all, I tell you what, people are in crisis. We, before we place blame, Right, we got to recognize that the vast majority of people are in crisis, and while they may be making reckless or mindless decisions, it's not really intentional. They caught up in systems that are larger than them, and they sort of swept up. Many instances, people are swept up by their lives or the circumstances in their lives. What I like about this is just a brief mention. So on the sixth of April, Mr. Sawyer, they are having a obstacle course competition, and the ministry is inviting public sector and private sector groups to come and participate in this uh, fun day, this fun sports day on April 6th. They're asking for people to sign up in teams of eight, come out there. They got an obstacle course. We'll be ducking pot oil and pot cake. Listen, it could be practice. It could be practice. Your little children, you don't want rule. Your parents still don't understand throwing things at you is against the law. Look here, come and be a part of this competition. Learn how to duck, learn how to dodge. Yeah, no, no, no. They have a uh, rock climbing and um, uh, rope climbing and whatnot. They, they mentioned mud. Yeah. And I just want the ladies to know, bring your swimming cap, bring your shower cap. Don't let a little bit of mud stop you from having fun, getting a good sweat. And they will all, they say, if there's enough interest, I think they will organize some fun activities at the Betty Kelly Swimming Center. And I think the quote is... So if you swim in mud, you could go to the pool and just wash it off. Right? No. You go to the shower oh. and wash it off. You go, okay. No, you go to the hose okay. outside the shower. Okay. Then you go to the shower. Then, then you, you get inside the pool. The pool. Okay. Um, but the quote is, we will... The only thing that you won't have to do on that day is swim. If we want to have a fun challenge, we will open up the Betty Kelly Kenning Aquatic Center and challenge those persons who believe that they are a fish in the water against this ministry. Now, you see that quote right there? It sounds to me like people from the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture are going to be competing in this competition against us regular people and other uh, civil servants in the water. Bring it on. Bring it on. It's healthy competition. Yeah, but Bring I, it on. Yeah. Bring I, it on. I am there for the bubbling competition. <laughs> I am going to win. <laughs> I only need one float because I am an expert bubbler. One float only. So on top, on top of that, the Queen's Baton will be making the rounds through the country. So it's sort of like the Olympics. They get the Queen's Baton. It's going to travel the world. And uh, it's going to move through the Bahamas, stopping at parks and sites where sporting activities will be taking place. I want the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture to do us a favor, please. There's not much time left. Put up the route. Identify the parks that are going to be on the route so people will know where to go. Right. They could make a plan, right? They could get people involved. We could, sit, we could have a little picnic. Come chill out. Hang out. But we won't be able to do that if you only tell us with short notice. notice. And that tends to be the reason why you get low public participation. Because people, you didn't give us enough time to organize our lives. So that's a bit of the housekeeping, Mr. Sawyer. There's some local news. Some payments all over the world doing big stuff. Shawnee Miller Weibo. That's what you're going to talk about. Because, you know, she's still the best. Yeah, yeah. In fact... She's still the best. She blew, I mean... She blew a hole in these people. But not just that, it's her record, right? So this, um, Shawnee now has the top two times in the North American, Central American, and Caribbean region in the women's yeah, that's 400. First, that's the first time ever winning an indoor title. Yeah. Believe it or not. And that puts her up with uh, Chandra Sturrup, Dominic Demerit, and Chris, Chris Brown, Brown mm -hmm. right? And that's... Uh, Women's 60 meter, men's 200 meter, and men's 400 meter, respectively. Divine, Devin, Divine Charlton. She got a silver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's spectacular. Hurdles. It's her first. Go on. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, 
um, looking at the pictures in the paper, I had no idea that uh, Divine, Devon, oh man, I hope I, I hope I ain't saying your name wrong. She's short, which Tiny. means she really fast. Yeah, she's really fast. And so that's, a, that, that's an accomplishment to her. Now you see this idea you have about training, raising gods, and growing gods, right? We need to go find out what the science is between, b- behind that power. For yeah, that. because, you know, I, I'm in a hurdle, you know, but the quicker you can get over it, right. the better. Yeah. You know, unless you're really long and tall, and, and then you kind of glide over. Right. So that way when you land, your competitors are already taking two steps. So it's almost jump, one, two, jump, one, two. Yeah. That, that technique. Yeah. So look here, look here, Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture and Private Sector. We could also be doing this type of work, right? Um, let's get the researchers down here and let's figure out what is it about these Bahamian and Caribbean bodies that's producing this power on the track. Um, there's uh, Bahamians in the uh, MLB spring training news. The Mingos post four top ten performances. There's golf in the place. But Mr. Sawyer, what you come to teach me about this morning? I come to teach you exactly, you know, what's going on in the NBA. First and foremost, DeAndre Ayton had a career high the other night. Right. 35 points. Right. And 14 rebounds? Yes, he did. Absolutely. Yes, he did. And hold on. And the best part is his team also won. Won the game. Right. Yeah. Not like LeBron who passed Carl Malone on Sunday. Sunday or Monday. He uh-huh. passed Carl Malone. For a second all time in points scored in NBA history. And they lost. Yeah. You know. So it was a bittersweet moment, you know. Right. Now is go on, go on, because I got another one of them woman questions, right? Which is have we transitioned to a time in basketball where it don't matter how good you are individually, if you don't get that team behind you, you your chances of doing something big. Have we sort of transitioned back? To that that space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team ball, team ball, is where it's at. Um, it's almost like how the uh, younger people right now are into pants that are quote unquote gunning. Yeah, but on the yeah. top. Like when I was growing up, the pants is gunning on the bottom. Now they're gunning on the top. No, but now it's gunning <laughs> at the bottom again. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, you're yeah, not gunning like uh, maybe like an inch and a half, two inches above the shoe. Gentlemen, we call those shorts. Yeah, but apparently that's the style. All right, that's because they don't know about mosquitoes. No, not I don't know cause where they because they, they still wearing socks. Yeah. Oh. You know. Yeah, I get Eureka. it. Eureka. Yeah, <laughs> I, un- I understand now. <laughs> yeah. You get you get live in a mosquito zone to understand our critique of fashion as old people. Look here, I got a caller on the line. Let's go to that caller. Caller, we only talk in sports right now. Please don't uh, get me in any trouble. Good morning. Aaron, pretty eye green. Yes, Brayman, how you do? A godly day to you and, of course, to you and the wife. Yes, sir. I called to express something to your guest. Yes. Uh, basketball, I know boating, sailing, before I know about basketball, and I know I'm older than you. I've learned to, to, uh, to skull before I, I learned to play basketball. Okay? And I used to stay at the Priory. I used to go to Sutton, which I met a basketball court there. But still, boating were all over the Bahamas, every island. People only know about boating, about boats, however you want to put it, and sailboats. So it's impossible for basketball to be our uh, national sport. Uh, Thank boy, you. Thank you, Brayman. You kept it about sports, but you picked big, big fight. But I can tell you what. Oh, What's interesting boy. about the fight is that there's going to be a a a age uh, perspective, right? There are people of a, a particular eras that there could be nothing but sailing as a national sport. Right. I mean, it's just it's just like the topic of basketball. You have people that say, "Listen, Kareem was the best." You have people that say. Jerry West was the best. You have people that say Bill Russell was the best. You have people that say Michael Jordan was the best. You have people that say Kobe Bryant. You have people that say LeBron James. You have people that say Kevin Durant. You have people that say Steph Curry. Right. So no disrespect to sailing, but right now, at this time right now, every single day, 
in every single school, from preschool straight up to high school, every single school has a basketball court on it. Mm -hmm. Not every single school is teaching you how to scuttle. Absolutely. Not every single school is teaching you how to make a sale, how high, how wide, how thick. And yes, it is our fault in general as a Bahamian people for not continuing the tradition. Mm -hmm. But right now as it stands, basketball is the most popular sport in the country of the Bahamas. Like, look here, that's Bre it. Bremen, and that's a hard argument to fight, you know. But I, I put it to you like this, Bremen. I'm a, I, I never thought I would say this, but, you know, if the government never made a decision, that would be okay. Because the tension and the conversations driven from the tension in, in, the, in the consideration is more important than any particular sport we choose. But what you said just now, Mr. Sawyer, is... Uh, it's the intergenerational perspective. Yeah, it's not I mean, just about the past, and it's not just about the present. It's also about what can drive us collectively into the future. future exactly. And so, boy, the, the two of them is a stiff fight, but you can't knock basketball out. Now, I mean, uh, Raymond, if you have an idea, if you have a concept, if you have a piece of property, if you have an area whereby you can teach young people how to skull. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's listen. Let's go. Let's go to this break. I see the producer is getting ready for some uh, coconut water. We got to go. We got to go. Stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM on the clock. It'll be right back. Like what you're hearing on the show? Want to support the conversation? Sponsor On The Clock today. Call Janet Lees at 302-2304. That's 302-2304. Be the solution. Sponsor On The Clock of Erin Green, where she dissects, we discuss, and you decide. Fidelity. We're good for you. We believe in relationship banking. We take pride in getting to know our clients. You have access to knowledgeable, approachable ambassadors and financial coaches so that we can recommend the best product for you. At Fidelity, we care about you. From your financial health to your physical health, we can relate to you because we're just like you. Come and start your relationship banking experience with us today. Visit us online at fidelitygroup.com. Visit any of our branches in Nassau or Grand Bahama or phone 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 for Freeport. Hey, the Brylanders, we're back. Oh my goodness, music. Oh, that's it. Rock it. Good morning. Welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. If you're on the clock with Aaron Green and my guest today, Mr. Eric Sawyer the third. Mr. Eric Sawyer the third. Look here, I I'm gonna pressure you about regatta. I can tell you something I learned about regatta. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, I can ask you how many regatta you think we have, but... Not that's easy. I already had the whole okay. answer. All right. what all a, right. Let's get back to the NBA. Are you excited? Okay. Yeah, First no of problem. all, yeah, no problem. I need to know, what are power rankings? What power is? rankings is just, is just a ranking made up. It's just something for people to read. Whereby, you know, and we look at the teams uh -huh. and we look at their chemistry. You uh -huh. know, it's the same thing in the NFL, same thing in the NHL, same thing in Major League Baseball. We look at their chemistry. We look at how they're able to come back from a deficit, you know. We, you know like, right. And, and then how, they, how, how they, they do it. How they, re, how they shift and reshape when someone's injured right. and when they come back in the game, right. stuff like that. Okay. Exactly. All right. All right. So I was reading about the power rankings and then I saw this story about the Celtics, the Nets, and the 76ers. 
But the Celtics looking good right now, bro. They went nine for one in out of ten games. And so I, far, first yeah. First of all, I just want to say to the basketball statisticians, you really had to tell me it was nine for one out of ten games. But it's okay. I all right. Yeah. I all right. Because then I forget. He may have been saying they've been nine for one against the Lakers. Like, you know, the Lakers are horrible. Yeah. yeah. And they and I mean the Lakers oh, are yeah. horrible, but that's not what I'm saying. Um so the Celtics, the Nets, and the 76ers are pushing for the top of the Eastern Conference. Correct. Now, now the Nets are waiting on Ben Simmons to finally come back and play ball because, you know, they traded for, they traded James Harden because James Harden wanted out right. of the Brooklyn Nets. Meanwhile, he only got there about a year ago from the Houston Rockets. He was traded from the Rockets to the Nets and decided, but you know what? Uh, seeing that Kevin Garnett is injured and we can get Kyrie to play. Oh, by the way, Kyrie, Kyrie Irving come like, He's going to be able to play now as of Sunday. Right. So I read that yeah. New York has relaxed their vaccine policy. Right. I just one quick question. You think they did that just for basketball? No. Okay, then. Cool, cool. No, no, because, you know, we have World War Three, so there's no more COVID. Yeah. Boom. There you go. Yeah. I mean, because rations, can't, we can't ration everything out everywhere. Right. But that's a good move for him. Cause that's it, a good move for the Nets. And yeah. Now that, and now that makes the Nets one of the more, the one, uh, actually, I think the most dangerous team going into the going into the NBA playoffs so because uh, Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, and then you sprinkle in Ben Simmons if he can come back before the season ends. Yeah. Ben Simmons never wants to shoot. He always wants to pass. He always wants to rebound. He always wants to play defense. So there's no extra ball hog on the court. I got you. I got you right. There's not, there's not that degree of selfishness. No, he is right. selfless. Yeah. He's a very good defensive player, 6'10", but 230. Right. But so how does the league uh, reconcile with a player like Irving when you require the, that level of selflessness and this player is like, but look here, I ain't taking the vaccine to play. Well, um, like I said, World War Three is yeah. here now, so now they have to kind of shift their attention and their focus. All right. Because I'm thinking, um, is it a contractual penalty, right? Like, so, yeah, I need to take the vaccine to play, but if you all fire me... I just then you go have to win. pay me out, right? Right, I got you. Now, now I mean, um, he he was not allowed to play at home. Right, he was right. Not allowed to play home games, and the Nets were fined forty thousand dollars last week, last week Monday, because they allowed him in the locker room. He came to the stands to watch the game, ah. and he walked back with the team into the locker room, and they were fined forty thousand dollars for allowing an unvaccinated player into their locker room. I got you. In, in the in the um state of New York, New York. All okay. right. You see, so. Listen, that, I just that came with some backlash. Right, I just excited because I ain't paying. I didn't pay attention to the Celtics since um, Paul Pierce. That's my name. Paul Pierce was playing for them. Yeah, the truth, whatever. I mean, but the truth that's a uh, hundred years ago. Yeah, yeah but yeah. so the Celtics. Like LeBron look, ran him out of town years ago, but that's neither here nor there. Boy, look here. It's a good thing LeBron was running the school. You know, like like. I hide in your feelings, and then I go into your children and telling them get a good I education, yeah. so you could take care of your daddy when he retire from basketball. All broke up from this beating. He does it every yeah. year. Yeah, LeBron must be a Bahamian too. So <laughs> look here. It seemed. What about the Miami he? Heat? Yeah, like Eric Spoelstra and Jimmy Butler got into a major argument two nights ago. You know, on that's the a picture of them fight the the coach and the player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that and they got the into coach. a major argument during a timeout. Um, they were playing, I think, the Spurs. The uh -huh. Spurs. I think it was the Spurs they were playing. And, um, yeah, you know, Jimmy Butler wasn't having it, and Eric Spoelstra wasn't having it. So, you know, an impenetrable, an impenetrable object met an immovable force. And so there were some fireworks. Yeah, anybody got penalized? Any fines? No? Mm -mm. No? no, they kept it in-house. I'm sure they had something... So they rendered something. I'm sure they spoke about something in house, but nothing came publicly. No. Yeah, a little birdie saying though, if they don't figure it out in a few moments, that they uh, risk losing all the momentum they've gained this season that yeah, was driving the heat, them. Yeah, the Heat is one dangerous team. Those fellas are gritty, man. They believe in playing basketball as a team. Yeah. They believe in diving for the loose ball. They believe in rebounds. Yeah. They believe in hard, tight, tough defense. It's like a Rodman, like a Rodman, like Pippen, a Rodman Barkley mentality. team. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Everybody. You think they could get past this hiccup? Well, they could get past this they turmoil. Should. They should. Now the Bucs are also a good team. The Nets, like I said, are dangerous. So we'll see. Yeah, I've been, I hear the Bucs are good. I want to know 
where I need to hedge my bet for Miami, where I need to go buy me some, you know, timeshare in Miami to go watch some some game. Where the Miami going to the playoff? Miami is going to the playoffs without a doubt. Without a doubt. All right. Without okay. Because the article I read said, look here, like like they were pushing forward, and something happened, and then something else happened, and then all of a sudden they are on the verge of not being in the playoffs. Without a doubt. Because you know Florida's a uh, second home. Yeah. Can't be that. Listen, I got a couple of texts here. Thank you, texter. I can tell them, please give me two hours. Thank you for sharing that word. Plant watermelon in the rain. Now you think I can play with these seeds, picking my harvest? I will drop something on them. They mama will cry. Listen, I can be honest with you. It's, since it's Sports Friday, we could talk about this. Um, I don't know who you think you are competing against out there for your watermelons, but they're raccoons, and they're they, they vicious, they're dangerous, and they're going to win, right? This is a concerted, you need a team response to these uh, watermelon. There's nothing you could do on your own. Another text. Miss Green, I want you and Sawyer Boy to enter a contest who could make the Duke and Duchess laugh first. I would enter it, but I would win because I would show them our last prime minister, and they would automatically laugh and would say, I cheat. Don't you make fun of our prime minister like that. Also, I would, um, I would make the Duke and Duchess play parking against each other. That'll make them laugh. That'll make them laugh. They ain't gonna ever park each other. They in love. They ain't gonna ever do that, but I think that would be a good laugh. Producer, that's some music you playing right there. Let's go to a break. When we get back from the break, I'm going to test Mr. Sawyer, find out how many regattas he know about in the Bahamas, and if he knows the true, tried, and tested rules of the regatta. Stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We will be right back. Everybody One thing there is no debate about is that BTC has the best rates. Now, the best rates just got better because you pay half the price of the other guys with your BTC home internet and mobile services combined. Switching to BTC is a no-brainer because I pay less with BTC and get super fast internet with speeds up to 600 megs. The other guys, their internet only go up to 105 megs. Get all the internet you want at half the price when you bundle your home internet and mobile. Visit a BTC store to make the switch today. Conditions apply. Girl, Junior just showed me Bala Boy on his phone. What you mean? He take picture of that good for nothing boy? Shh, you don't want Bala hair. You say that. You know she always has said that's my good child. So what he doing in Junior phone? Oh, he there because the police looking for him. He on that wanted list. Wanted persons in your phone now? Yes, child. And when police want to find anybody quick, quick, after something happened, they can send pictures direct to your phone. Go to Google Play or App Store and search for Crack Ryan Bahamas, then pick install and we'll go straight to your phone. There is also a section on missing persons. Yes, girl, everybody needs to get this app so police can tell us right away when these people go missing. Just like an alert system. Yes, it has numbers for Crime Stoppers Bahamas so you can call and nobody knows you. Call directly to Miami and give the information without giving your name or anything about you. I tried the other day and when I hear Junior and his boys talking about where they hide those guns, I walk quick, quick round on the corner and call that number. Calls 328-8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. Boys, I miss another regatta down there in summer this year. I hear that better than Blackburn regatta, Papa Avenue regatta, and crowd fest down there in Andrews. Boy, I miss that this year. No, sir. No, way. 
George down at Zoom on pitch. We got a time again. So grab up all your things for you. Come down and bring a friend. If you're looking for a good time on the place to have some fun. Good morning. Welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh new smart talk all day. Listen, you're on the clock with Aaron Green. We know that. Here's what you don't know. In the break, my producers say you're talking about sports. Let me test you. Let me test you. So we just had a 20-meter dash. I had to dash out this room and try to get some of that coconut water before they drink it all up and dash back to the mic right in time. They bogged that right in there just now. Listen, there's a whole bunch of speed competition was, taking place. It was good. I'm so sorry I had to leave you right before <laughs> the last right. break, but I had to catch some of that coconut water. And, and look here. I'm sorry. Um, let me talk about the cultural uh, production, the show. What he's going to do for the prince and the princess, the duke and the duchess, right? I was just reading the, the Invictus Games taking place uh, at the end of April. The Invictus, that's a good cologne. But go on. Talk. Right. But it's also, it's the uh, uh, games for injured former military uh, and like retired yeah. military mm-hmm. people, right? Set up by the Duke's younger brother, Prince Harry, right? Like he initiated that. That's and the so, party animal. That's the boss. Yeah, yeah. So we got the Invictus games. We got the, uh, what they call it, the X games happening in Japan in April, around the same time, mm. right? And then you got things like the Fireman Challenge, and then you, right, you got other types of military games. I would have put on a local Bahamian, just like we used to do Corner Boy Olympics, and we used to do at Methodist Youth Summer Camp. I would put on an obstacle course of Bahamian things you guys do, right? And show the prince and the princess, like, this is the average day of a family islander, right? Or a fisherman, but you get carried like you a whole. You shoot marble. Right, you get shoot marble, you get yeah. duck, you know, you get roll because your cousin trying to. Kick you and take your right, tank. Right, like you got to throw rock up at the mango tree to get the mango out of the tree. Right, you got uh-huh. you got bark this I coconut. I catch it before it hit the ground. Because that's mm-hmm. the most important. You yes. got bark this coconut and a time thing. Right, right. You got scale the fish dead fast. Right, and maybe nothing with the knife. You don't want the prince cut his hand because you could die from people cutting the bombs. Don't tell the prince, right? But <clears throat> I would have put on an activity, a sporting activity like that, right, where they would have competed with average people. I we just want like y'all Pauline Davis and 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 Divine Charlton and thing coming to compete against us regular people. We want regular people competing with regular people because at the end of the day, the Duke and the Duchess is regular people, right? Well, they normal, normal rope tie-in competition thing like that. Uh, but anything to do with Bowden, anything to do with 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 how we live here, and to sort of manifest how sometimes life could be like a a sport. Like which, a challenge. Which means, and I guess we won't be showing cricket. But anyway, that's another story. Man, okay. listen. Shout out to Charlie Gator. Yeah, shout out to Jiminy. Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> listen, just a quick note, quick note before we get back to regatta and mm-hmm. basketball. Uh, after what you Ma- got? So there's an article about Miss McPhee McEwen, Bahamian in, uh, at Ole Miss. Right? Re- Ole Miss Rebels. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So yeah, yeah, the running Rebels. Yes, yeah, big yeah. rumors that she was leaving, but she had to set the record straight. She said after much, well, after much speculation on social media. Where's she going? Following the exit. Well, they were saying, I think, the Bulldogs, the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, but despite a report from Mike Robinson at a bailout on Wednesday that McPhee McEwen was in line to be the next head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, the fourth year Ole Miss head coach delivered a statement to the contrary last night. And she basically said... Uh, where's she going? Staying right where she is. Exactly. Where's she going? No That's way. basically what she said. Where are you going? Yeah. Right? I staying right here. Okay, staying right here. Right. And she said, the chemistry is good. The visions are aligned. And I like waking here. And that's, and what that's exactly do. what we were talking about earlier. That's a good power team. Yeah. If we're looking for power index, that's right. where it starts. If the coach is in line, players that will come in will also be in line. Right. And I think that's why Bahamian athletes fit so well into professional sports teams. Because Bahamian athletes come in with that culture that I'm a part of a team. Yeah, and man. it's the teamwork that makes the dream work. Yeah, no matter dream how work. good I am. No, exactly. Right? And that's sort of... Because you grow up hard in the Bahamas. Yeah. You could be the best student in the world, but if you ain't got no electricity in your house, because, you know, things rough. With the power company, you, you got to figure out how to do the homework. And we used to push in through those hardships. Another quick story. The National School Golf Championships wrap up today and... And uh, Bahamas Flag Football League returns on Sunday, 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 with five games at the Thompson A. Robinson Fields. I know the players are ready for that. The Bahamas Flag Football League 
is set to kick off its 13th season Sunday, March 27th at Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. I know the women flag footballers are ready, ready, they are ready. ready. They are ready. And I, and I know a guy that plays flag football. Yeah. Giano. Our boy Wallace? Wallace plays. He's still flag. playing? Yeah, man. He's still playing. That's good because I thought Wallace was on team sailing as a national sport. I thought he's out on the water beating ocean bad. Mm. That's his job. That's 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 not his uh, That's not what hobby. he does no. for fun. No. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Mr. Sawyer, do you know how many regattas there are in the Bahamas? Yes. How many? Twelve. You, Hello. You, you off. What? You off. Okay. By, by plenty. No. I'd like more. Name one you know. Okay. I know Exuma Regatta. Right. Hob Island Regatta. Right. I know that we have one here. That's like the no-boat regatta. Oh, I know we have the oh, no boat. No, no. Whereby you just go out there, <laughs> eat and drink, and look at the water. No boats on the water. Ah, I didn't know it had a name. I thought they just called it the homecoming, but being a family island. Right, exactly. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The best that's the best of the best regatta? Yeah. It's more no. like home staying, not really <laughs> homecoming. <laughs> um I know there's one in Long Island. Right. One in Cat Island. Yeah. Uh so there's one in Black Point? There's a well Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black yeah, Point the one in Black Point. Right. Um, Rollville Regatta. Hold on. That's another Exuma Regatta, right? Get it. Oh, what? So Exuma got all the Regatta. They got the Rollville uh, Homecoming uh, Festival and Regatta, uh, the Baratari Homecoming Festival and Regatta. Then they got, it's Black Point is in Exuma too, right? Yeah. Black Point Regatta. Then uh, National Family Island Regatta is in Exuma too. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, what? So Exuma you all wouldn't be the home of the regatta. Eh? I said Exuma got a regatta. And and then I know there's one in Black Point. I, I didn't know there was another two in, in, in Exuma. How big Exuma is? We look at Exuma is very big, you know. I mean, Exuma bigger than I thought. And um these islands it's a, anyway, all of these things are connected and interesting because Dwight Strong been talking about what it takes to become a republic and we know we need to become a federation. Some of these islands have a central governance, you know? They have their own vibe. And all of the Exuma, all these settlements got their own regatta. And I think that's an indication of a degree of independence. Well, that's good, yeah. When you got yeah. your own regatta. Yeah, that's good. So there's the St. Valentine's Day Massacre Regatta. Look here, who been to that? Why y'all ain't tell us about that? Why is it named the St. Valentine's Day Massacre? Are y'all trying to tell us? Is this a, is, Love kills? That's what you're trying to is say? Is this a sweetheart and regatta? Why what you all call it that? Um, the All Andres and Berry Island Regatta. The North Elutra Harbor Island Regatta. But then I also see on the list the North Elutra Sailing Regatta, which makes me think that you are correct, Eric. Like there's is like a, 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 a regatta with boat and then a regatta with no boat. Or at least the boat is pull up, but we ain't going to sail. We ain't going to We are there to eat, drink, and be merry. Right. Then there's the Grand Bahama Regatta, the West End Junior Sailing Regatta, the Abaco Regatta, the South Andres Regatta, the Mangrove Key Regatta. I think in all them north, the Bimini Regatta and the all, like I said, the all Andres and Berry Island Regatta. All them regattas taking place in the north. Wow. Now, not all of the regattas are the same. Some are just C sloop, uh, C class boats. Some okay. are B class boats. Some are all. And then some are A, B, and C. Um, and then some, I guess, have homecomings attached, right? Which makes them a larger sort of event. Makes it, I guess, more national yeah. than just local um, sailing. But I was just fascinated by it. So in total, like it sounds like you said 22. I think so. 1, 2, 3. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. 22. Now, listen, this is a strong argument for uh, sailing, sailing as a national, national sport, national but sport. I can put that down because young people need to live too. Young people need to live too. And young people don't swim no more. But that's another story for another day. Right. Which is interesting. Yeah, because uh, you go to the beach to take pictures. That's what the cars say. Mm -hmm. I don't go in water. I just go to a profile mm -hmm. with somebody daughter. The young all. people be telling you all the truth. But it's our fault. It's our fault. However, what I learned, the uh, listener from last week informed me that those sailing programs, the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture and the Bahamas National Sailing School, they also teach young people how to swim. So if you come and you can't swim, 
Okay. We're, we're also going to teach you how Excellent. to swim. Okay, yeah, good, right. good, good. This, good. this is the companion, yeah. right? Yeah. You get swimming you and sailing. You have to be able to swim if you can go sailing. Right. And here's why, despite your very sound and reasonable arguments for basketball as a national sport, and you're not the only person, right? This is a concerted, well, not a concerted, but this is the collective voices. Despite the sound arguments that you put forward, especially considering the intergenerational nature, right, of uh, development. Sailing still is a strong contender. When we see the presence of regattas in the country and... And we missed it. And we missed it as a, as a country. Yeah. As a nation, we, we miss regattas. Yeah. We, we want them it's, back. It's been two years. Yeah. It's been two years since... Anybody's seen a boat sail anywhere. And so I firmly and truly believe every single regatta this year, for sure, uh-huh. is going to be well attended. Absolutely. Yeah, man. And if... if and if, if you have the opportunity to go... Go and support the go community. Go and support. Yeah, man. Go and support the community. Mm-hmm. If you if, Now, I will say there's a lot of talk in the market. People don't oh, go to regatta to go watch boat. They go to regatta to go... Rah, 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 rah and have a good time and spend money in the community and in the economy. Yeah. Right? And, and so we encourage that. Every single island does great homemade bread. Every single island, man. Boy, like, look like here. Some of those islands do it on an outdoor all, oven. All I want when I travel to Regatta is a hot bowl of sheep tongue sauce, Johnny Cake, right? And some switcher. I could do it with some stew grouper. Oh. Or stew boil. Stew, stew boil. boil. Yeah. Perhaps the greatest boil. invention in the history of the Bahamas, John Canoe in the whole world, stew boil. Yeah, oh, I that, love it. Some Johnny cake. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can't have regatta without it. Squeeze a lime. Right. Mm-mm. Not a cold Gatorade. Let me start my day. Now, look here. See, people, if we tell you about this sports thing, if you want to see sports excel in your country, you got to get involved in the culture of the sport. It's more than just being an athlete. Sometimes it's doing the work of supporting the athlete, the community, or the sport itself. The country at large. Right. There's plenty of mm-hmm. things going on this weekend. Let's get out there and support our Bahamian athletes. Let's support our Bahamians. Let's have fun. Oh, I haven't a chance to talk about the Dolphins and the fact that they now have Tyreek Hill. Oh, my. That's what happened for real. Look here, I now, about that. Now you can't tell a Dolphin nothing. Look at how I got to go buy my aqua clothes for next week. I'm going to be a dolphin next week. I'm going to be a dolphin. Thank you for tuning in to Guardian Radio. Sports with uh, Eric Sawyer III and your host, Aaron Green. The mini regatta is taking place today. Listen, if you could get there, if you could get there. If you can't remember, traffic is another sport in the Bahamas. Yeah, man, park at the the mall and walk. (laughs) Have a great day. Stay tuned. Guardian Radio AM is up next and then remember we're getting naughty with naughty this monday 4 to 6 p.m naughty joins the guardian family tune in we're gonna have a good time he's another cowgirl i gotta talk to oh yeah look at the rivalry i'll have to bring him on once he joins the family we gotta go mr sawyer we gotta go have a great day bahamas and um kate and william kate beat him on beat him on the way do him in, like a Bahamian enjoy, woman, do him in. Enjoy your time here, guys. <laughs> enjoy your day. time while you're here. Get back here inside. Sam behind the head real low. Cause she hiked the pride. She said, Sammy can't go. Every time he asked.